Okay, so um, we're going to talk about section 5.2 mostly in class, but uh, 5.3, which is the last section before the first exam, will be on volume. So let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, <clears throat> so here's the idea. So suppose you have like a solid solid object that you want to compute the value of. So like here's how I draw a solid object. It's like, you could just think of it as just like a blob, some kind of blob. And uh, I want to draw this thing. I'm going to draw it so that it's so that it's a solid object, um, pointed sort of in, in the direction, maybe longitudinally or whatever, in um, with respect to the x-axis. Okay, and um, and so this is like a solid. Okay, and now um, I want to uh, imagine that if you take uh, like an x value in here somewhere, that there is a um, that there's a cross-sectional area, so the, maybe the area of this cross-section, so let's say area, suppose that we would call this thing AX. So AX is the area of a cross-section of the solid At, um, at coordinate x, okay? So for every value between a and b on the x-axis, there's like a slice of this solid, okay? So we're gonna use this function, this area function of the area of the cross-sectional slice to compute the volume. It's really not that complicated. So if you take, um, if you take b minus a over n, so of course this is our delta x, um, and, and you use this to be the, the width. So let's say we chop this up into some pieces here. Okay, n pieces. Um, and, then you, and then you take a look at the following quantity. So if you took ax, maybe we'll use the, the end point. So here xi is the same as before. It's a plus i times delta x. Um, if we took axi times delta x, then what would this be? Well, this would be the volume of a thick slice at uh, xi, okay? So in the picture, we might think of it like this. So here's xi, here's the, the, the interval delta x, and then if we look, we might take, we might have like a, a solid cross-section here. So that solid cross-section will have volume, whatever the area is of this slice, times however wide um, the segment is, or times however, I guess, high that slice would be. So the area of the cross-section times how, how thick that is. So you get the little volume of that thick slice. And if you add all of these up, so i goes from 1 to n of axi delta x, then you get, this is approximately the volume of the solid. Okay, so this is, so this, this is sort of the key, okay? And of course, by now, whenever you see a sum of n things and there's a delta x involved, you know what's gonna happen. We're gonna take a limit of this as n goes to infinity and we're gonna get the actual volume. So let's do that. So the, the, the actual volume will be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of this sum of, that's a one, um, this sum of cross-sectional slices. And this is, this limit is just the integral from a to b of the, of the area of the slice. Okay, so this is, this right here, this is area, of the slice at x, okay? This is the formula, okay? Very important, so this is the thing that you will wanna know for the exam, okay? Um, let's do an example really quick, okay? So here's the example. So let's take the curve 
here's x, y. Um, let's take this curve. This is y equals the square root of x. Can we see that? Does that show up? It does show up. Okay. So this is y equals the square root of x. And I just want to take this um, from, from x equals 0 to x equals 1. I want to take this, um, this region underneath the graph. And I want to, I'm going to draw a, I'm going to draw a, a circular shaped arrow to mean take this region that you see here and spin it around the x-axis as though this was a three-dimensional picture. Imagine this was like just a, a, a metal plate or something and you're spinning it around the x-axis. So this is called the solid that you get is the solid of revolution. Let's call it E. Uh, obtained by revolving the region. Um, I don't know. Let's call this. Let's call this region B. The region B around the x-axis. Okay. This is called. So the solid you get, it's going to look like this. I'll draw it as a, as a picture. It's going to look a little bit like like a bowl. So here was the y-axis again, and then you would have this x-axis coming out here, uh, like so. And so E is this solid. So stare at this picture for just a few minutes. Just pause the video, stare at this picture. If you took the region B here and sort of thought of swinging it around the x-axis, then this is the shape that you would obtain, okay? And what is a slice of this look like. So here's a coordinate. If we took a slice, like just like chop through it, like it's a piece, like it's a piece of Play-Doh or something, just slice right through it, then that's going to make a disc. And that disc is going to have this as its radius, okay? So right here, this will be the radius of the disc shaped slice at x, okay? We'll call that x right there. This will be x right here, okay? So what is the area then? So that means the area function, so the area of this slice at x should just be pi times whatever that radius is squared, right? The area of a circle, this thing right here, is a, is a, it's a disk, so it's a circle. It's pi times its radius squared. Well, we know how high this is. We know what this radius is. The coordinates are x, and then the height is square root of x. So this is pi, the square root of x squared. So that is just pi x. So this is our formula. This is ax, okay? So that means the volume of E, the volume of this solid, according to our formula, is you integrate from the one end of the solid to the other, so it would be from 0 to 1, and then you integrate the area function dx. Well, the area function is just pi x, so this is 0, 1, pi times x, dx. And if we integrate this, we get pi x squared over 2 from 0 to 1. So if you plug in 1, you get a half. If you plug in 0, you get 0, so you just get pi over 2. So that's the answer. The volume of this is pi over 2, whatever the units are, cubic, whatever. All right, so that is an example. Um, let's try another example. This time I want to go the uh, in the other direction. So let us suppose I want to take this example now. How about y? equals x cubed, and um, and I just want to take this up to height, so 8. So if this is y equals x cubed, and the coordinate here, the y coordinate is 8, then that means down here we've got 2, right? 2, 8. And I want to take this region as the region, and we're going to revolve it not around the x-axis this time, but around the y-axis. So here's y, here's x. So if we do that, then the solid that we obtain, it also looks sort of bowl-shaped, but this time it's 
This time its axis of revolution is the y-axis. So this is height 8. And, um, and so we want to do exactly the same thing that we did uh, before. We're going to take we're going to take our slice this way so that our disk looks like that. Okay. Now this is a disk. It's not an X disk anymore. This is a Y disk. So what we really want is we want the area, but we want the area to depend on Y. And so in this case, the volume, the solid of revolution obtained by B around the Y axis. Okay. And this will be, okay, it's an integral again, but this time, because we're, we're revolving around the Y axis and not the X axis, we integrate with respect to Y here. And we need an area function for Y, and we need a Y range. So notice here, the Y range goes from 0 to 8, 0 to 8, that's where these come from. There, there's eight. And there's zero. Um, <clears throat> Ay is the area of that slice. Again, this is an this is an um, a, a disc. Its disc will have that as its radius. So this is its radius. That right there is the radius, which will be if this is y, then we know how y and x relate to each other. Um, y is equal to the, we want this length, so y is the cubed root, or sorry, x, the, this length here will be the cubed root of y. Because x and y relate to each other on this graph by this equation. So we're integrating from 0 to 8, and we're taking pi times the cubed root of y squared, because this is pi times the radius squared, dy. And then, well, let's simplify this. This is y to the one-third squared. So that is y to the two-thirds. And there's a pi there. And if we integrate this, we get pi. Let's see, raise one, to, uh, raise this power by one, so we raise it by three-thirds. So that's five-thirds. Divide by the new power, that's three-fifths. Divide by five-thirds, same as multiply by three-fifths. And we're integrating from 0 to 8. So we get 3 fifths times pi times 8 to the 5 thirds minus 0. And if you simplify this, 8 to the 1 third power is 2. 2 to the 5th is 32. So this is 3 times 32 over 5 pi. So this is the answer to the volume. I want you to compare this really quickly to the previous example. So the previous example, we took a, a planar region and we revolved it around the x-axis, and so we integrated with x. Okay? In the, this example, we took a planar region, we revolved it around the y-axis, we integrated with y. The technique is exactly the same, x or y, it just depends. What you integrate against depends on what you're revolving, um, what axis you're revolving around, the x or the y-axis. Okay, maybe we'll do one more example. How about... this example. We will take... I want to take the line y equals x, 45 degree line, and I want to take the curve y equals x squared. This, this is y equals y equals x squared, right here. They intersect when y equals x and y equals x squared, so this is the point 1, 1. So there's 1, and there's 1. And I want to take this region, let's call it, we'll call it r, and I want to revolve this around the x-axis. Now let's do that. So e is the solid obtained by revolving this around the x-axis. So now so this is our symbol for revolving around the x-axis. This is a little bit harder to picture as a solid, but it should look, you know, it will look something like, it'll look something like this, because you'll get that piece from the line. And then you'll have kind of this, like, this 
piece in the middle here removed out. Sort of like, look, look a little bit like a funnel of some kind. So here's the x-axis. Here's the y-axis, like this. Look a little bit like a funnel. But more importantly, what is the slice going to look like here? So if we took a slice of this, and we take that slice and revolve it around the axis, the x-axis, then what we're going to see is we're going to see a ring or an annulus of in the in the math in math jargon we call this an annulus. So it looks something like this. Here's the x-axis. Here's the y-axis, and the the radii that we're talking about this um, this length right here. Um, so this will be our slice. It'll look like a it'll look like a washer of some kind. Now, now, how do you determine what the area of this washer is? So the area of this is equal to the outer area minus the inner area. Okay. So what is that? That is pi times something squared minus pi times something else squared. So we need a formula for what the outer radius is, so maybe I'll draw this picture again in a little bit more relief so we can get a really good picture of this. So here's, this was y equals x squared. This is y equals x. And here's our outer radius. Like this, this is the outer radius. And then here's the inner radius there, okay? If you look at this picture and this picture, then then you can get the area of this washer by looking at the area of the disk that this segment will make when you swing it around the x-axis and subtracting the little disk that you would get from the middle by swinging this, this eye length here. Okay, so what is that in terms of x? Um, well, the, the first height will be, so if we're at x right here, then, then the outer radius will just be also x, so you get x right there. And the inner radius, this point right here, has coordinates x, x squared. And so the inner radius will be x squared. So this is the formula for our, uh, for our area, pi. I'm going to factor that out. We get x squared, and then we get minus x to the fourth. Okay, Pi times x squared minus pi times x to the fourth power. And we just factor out the pi. So this right here is our area function. And we do exactly the same thing. We integrate from 0 up to 1, and we integrate against x, so this function. So let's do it. So the volume is 0 to 1. The area function, pi x squared minus x to the fourth dx. Simplify this just a little bit. Let's get rid of that pi. We'll bring it outside. It's a constant anyway. X to the fourth. Very good. And so we get x cubed over 3 minus x to the fifth over 5 from 0 to 1. And then we plug in 1. We get pi times 1 third minus 1 fifth. And then when we plug in 0, this will end up being 0. And um, this will be pi times 0. So we just get, we'll get a 0 there. So this is pi, whatever that number is, pi times 1 third minus 1 fifth. This is the volume. Okay. All right. Um, let's, um, let's leave it at that example. We'll do, more, we'll do more examples like this in class. This will be what we'll work on on Thursday and on Monday. All right.